So it's been about a year since I first started the conversion retrofit for the MyFed ML7 lathe. And uh, generally the initial version worked quite well, uh, but there were a few things I wanted to change. After the initial period of uh, using it and getting to know the software, I decided I wanted to make a few changes, uh, mainly to the cross slide. So what you'll see in this video is me drilling into the saddle of the ML7 and tapping holes, and these are for the linear rails. Once in place, I won't be using the original cross slide at all anymore, and I'll actually be making a riser block in this video as well. The riser block also acts as a solid toolpost mount for the Dixon style quick change toolpost. The next few clips show a little bit of experimentation using my homemade fly cutter. I prefer this type uh, because you can run it at much higher RPMs and I'm just playing around with different inserts that I happen to have in the workshop. I did notice I was getting some problems with leaving a step on multiple passes which led me to inspect the mill in a bit more closer detail and it actually turned out a few bolts had uh, become loose causing the knee to actually be tilting down towards the front. Um, I'm not sure how it became loose, um, but after tightening it up, it was absolutely fine. So once I'd fly cut both sides of this piece of mild steel, bright mild steel, I uh, attempted to use the bandsaw to cut it off into two equal parts. One will become the top and the other will become the bottom part of the tool post mount. I could have cut the steel in the other orientation and it would have been quicker, but it would have been more likely to wander. And I was actually very happy that it turned out to be perfectly in two halves and very straight and square cuts. I then started to drill one of these pieces which would become the lower portion, but I quickly realised I was drilling it in the wrong orientation. So I flipped the part and started again. You can see here how the hole should be, and um, they are counterboard to accept the M3 bolts. You can see I was also drilling a central hole for each of the four bolt patterns and this is where the top part will bolt down. I was then milling out the portion of the top half which would become the solid tool post mount and you can see the two small holes that I'd misdrilled before. Uh, it's a little bit annoying but um, it, it won't harm the project in any way. This took a little bit of time, but with some coolant it uh, went reasonably quickly. And a little bit of corner relief there, so that the tool post would sit perfectly. This all adds to the rigidity of the machine. Here we have the x-axis ball screw. And these are the cheaper imported versions, but a good upgrade to do is to replace the ball bearings with quality alternatives. These are rolled, not ground, but I was actually quite happy with the quality.
you can see now the rails bolted down to the saddle and how the two halves of the tool post mount work together, bolting down onto the rail blocks and to each other. And we can see the whole assembly minus the ball screw. It's a much more solid and rigid setup and allows nice free movement. With the X axis ball screw in place, you can see how it runs on the rails. I decided to remove the second bearing block from the front of the X axis. It was just unnecessary. You can see it centers quite nicely. I made a chip cover out of some leftover pond liner. It's a rubber material and it's quite hard wearing. It's definitely not the prettiest thing, but it does work. And it keeps any chips out of the ball screws and electronics. A year ago, when I was starting the conversion, I built this cabinet. It featured a front that could be removed to make cleaning a lot easier. It just clips into place and is very sturdy. The lid has a large piece of perspex and is held up with gas struts to make it easier. I removed the original drip oilers and replaced them with cup oilers. They have a small wick and I find it's much more useful for the work I do. I keep them topped up throughout the running day. This is the Centroid Acorn motherboard. This is the brains of the machine. And these are the stepper drivers, one for each axis. And finally, the VFD, which drives the motor. You can see here how the frequency changes when I change the settings in the CNC software. This will also later allow threading and constant surface feed. This is what the CNC software looks like. I load in the program exported from, in this case, Fusion 360. I can check the settings and then start the program. For this demonstration I'm just using a piece of Delrin and the item we're turning is just a made up shape in Fusion. It took me less than three minutes to make. I generally like to use these polished inserts they tend to cut pretty much anything, as long as you get the feeds and speeds correct. Throughout this program, I had to occasionally pull away some of the swarf. A nice feature of the software is you can actually pause a program at any time and this allows you to check the tool, replace the insert tip if it happens to break and also in this case it allowed me to remove a lot of the entangled delrin. I'll speed up the process a little. The spindle is turning at around 1000 RPM. 
with a feed around 5 inches per minute. And here's the finishing pass in real time. I hope you found this portion of the conversion interesting. And there's also a few other videos of the rest of the build available on my channel. I look forward to making many more videos, partially using the CNC lathe, as well as finishing off the Shorblin 102, which still needs some repairs. That's it for this one, and thank you for watching.